Oh God, it's time. Oh my God. 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 Oh my gosh. I can't do this. I can't do this. Oh my God. I can't do this. I can't do this. Oh my God. Oh my God. What am I doing? What am I doing? I am not a TEDx speaker. I am not a TEDx speaker. Oh my God. I can't do this. Oh God. Oh God. I can't breathe. Hi, I'm Shanuki. Oh God. Oh God. Okay, okay, fake it, fake it, fake it, fake it, fake it, fake it. I fake it. Wow, way to go. If I had hands in my head, I'd clap for me right now. Sorry. Ugh, I'm so <clears throat> stupid. Uh, what I mean is, I pretend um, uh, uh, in life. Oh, uh, God. Uh, what, what I mean is... Stop uh, looking nervous. Uh, have you... Have you ever wanted to, uh, have you ever wanted to do something big, you know, speak up about something or speak to an audience, and you just don't think you can? But then, your mother and everything you read on Pinterest tells you to just be yourself and everything will be okay. This is not one of those talks. Chances are just being yourself isn't going to cut the mustard, and you're not going to change any status quo. Oh, God. I think I just call them losers. Oh, I am so pathetic. Um, OK, deep breath. Count to five. One, two, three, four, five. So I'm here to tell you about the benefits of faking it. Hi, I'm Shanuki, and I'm an actor. I get up on a stage and I change to entertain. I've been doing it for over 20 years now, but what nobody, not even my mother knows, until today, is that I suffer from severe stage fright and anxiety. Why am I telling people this? Uh, only my closest friend in all the world knows how badly I need to pee just before a curtain goes up, or how much I'm convinced that every performance is going to suck. I think it stems from a deep-seated inferiority complex, but one that I've managed to hide so well for so long that even my family would laugh if I said I had it. I've grown up surrounded by opinions on who I should be, as have many other people in this country. From the time we're born, our families, our schools, our societies, they tell us how to walk, talk, sit, stand, think, feel, who we can and cannot love. We get so used to allowing society to cast our mold and decide on our limitations that we grow up believing in it ourselves. And then for the rest of our lives, every decision we take, every action we make is dictated by that same self-image, that pessimistic voice in our heads. We do what we think we are capable of, and we avoid what we think is beyond our control. And very few of us have the balls to transcend this self-built barrier. But some of us find a way to escape our reality from time to time. And my particular escape mechanism is this theatrical skill of shape-shifting personality. The stage allows me to forget myself and become someone else entirely. I can be like a really immature teenager with like no problems whatsoever. I can be an old lady who has achieved peace of mind through wisdom and time. I could be a brave and fierce warrior queen. Or I could even be a nun named Maria, who sings endlessly about her favorite thing. Please don't sing. Please don't sing. Do not sing. Nobody needs to hear me sing. <laughs> to, to perform each role, I use this dramatic technique called characterization. It's the art of becoming someone else by adapting the way that character would behave. Then you pair that up with the right costume and instant transformation. This art of putting on faces has not only helped me in, on stage, but has helped me immensely in all the different roles I perform in my real life. I put on faces to mask my own insecurities. And I believe this is what has helped me achieve whatever I have so far in life. Not that I've achieved 
anything even close to the other speakers here. God, what am I doing on a TEDx stage? I think it's I because mean, I've learned seriously? to shut my inner voice up and project a completely different personality. But I'm not the only one who does this. Each and every one of you is also a brilliant fake. Think about it. How many of you have put on a face at an interview? Hmm? Or how many of you have expressed joy at meeting your mother-in-law? <laughs> how many of you have acted all swag and confident when you're trying to impress a girl when all you want to do is piss in your pants? <laughs> Even with our little children, have you noticed how we become like animated cartoons when we talk to little children? If we did that all the time, somebody would institutionalize us. <laughs> no. That's you playing to an audience, wanting approval. But did you know that you can actually use this inner drama queen to do bigger and better things? I believe characterization, or faking it, is one surefire way of breaking every barrier you think you have and making big changes in your universe. It's a technique that's used in drama therapy all over the world. They use it in schools, in offices, in, in prisons, uh, in companies, and you see, when you focus on being yourself, you also focus on all your limitations and your issues. But when you're someone else, that person doesn't have your hang-ups and your baggage. So that person can actually focus on your problems from a completely different perspective, and that can have magical effects. I used this technique of characterization recently when uh, some of my theater group and I, we visited a community center in Kalutara for underprivileged kids. Now, these are kids who have come from terrible homes. They have homes riddled with drugs, violence, poverty, you name it. And when we first went, it was very difficult to get any sort of response out of these children. They had built a wall around themselves. But then we played a game. We gave them different characters, and we told them, come up with little stories. Suddenly, there was this complete shift of energy in the room. You know, they were dealing with themes like murder, abuse, prostitution, things they were familiar with. But as their characters, they, they were fighting back against the bad guys, they were speaking up against the issues, they had positive endings to their stories, so much so that by the end of the exercise, there was so much noise and laughter that the community center's director said he was amazed because there were children who had never spoken, who were now the most vocal in the room. And that's just in one day. When you do this kind of exercise continuously, you see a shift in your own personality, because like any other muscle in your body, you have trained your brain to think from a different angle. And that's the power that faking it or characterization has as, a, as an escape mechanism, but more importantly, a self-therapy tool. It's great to deal with things like, um, like, like grief, um, trauma, suicide. Ooh, what about those annoying aunties you just want to slap? Depression. <laughs> but it's not just internal. You can also change your external environment. You know how we've all read these books, right? Motivational books about the power of self-belief and how it can positively impact your external environment. Well, you have to admit, no matter how many motivational books you read, you can't just switch on self-belief. I am saying just Fake it till you believe it. Maybe I should look like I know what I'm talking about. So, Sanford Meisner, who developed acting techniques, said that an actor's greatest tool is his or her imagination, which is quite limitless, whereas a person's real experiences are very limited. So in order to help you imagine that you are someone else, I've broken down my technique of characterization to three steps. One, Give yourself a background. Once you have decided who your character is going to be, decide where does he come from or she. What experiences in your life have colored this character? The more information you add, the more realistic and more relatable that character becomes to you. Two, give yourself a personality. Are you going to be cool and calm? Are you going to be fired up and fiery? What is your given attitude to the circumstance you're in? And three, give yourself a costume. Now, I don't mean walk around in tights or a ballroom dress. 
I mean, it can be a pair of shorts or it can be a corporate power suit, dressed to suit the character and the situation you're in. Let me give you a few examples from my own life. Hi, I'm Shanuki, and I'm an animal welfare activist. I think it's because animals understand me more than humans do. But when it comes, see, the thing is, when it comes to my activism, it's very difficult to be an activist when you're riddled with anxiety issues. I mean, every negative criticism I get, and we get a lot, makes me want to run and hide and cry and never speak again. But I can't do that if I want to save animals. You can't be, you know, uh, you, you can't be a coward if you want to speak up for something. So when it comes to my activism, I become Shira, Zena. If you want to stand up for a cause, you channel your inner badass superhero, and you do what needs to be done. You put on your busting boots, you forget your political correctness. And that is what has helped me look at a political VVIP in the eye and tell him exactly where to get off, create really popular but controversial campaigns and get the endorsement of an amazing organization, educate people on the plight of captive elephants, scold a Catholic bishop, and win an argument with an underworld thug to get his abused dog returned to my care. Yeah! And then I've gone and pissed in fear afterwards. In my early 20s, I was Shanuki, the English teacher. But here's the thing, I'm not child-friendly. So, I used to become Mary Poppins. Now, when you have to practice patience and restraint like me, you channel your inner Gandhi, your Mother Teresa. You know, we all like to believe we are angels, no? So here's your chance to act on it. Today, I have my students coming up to me and saying how I was their favorite teacher, never knowing that I used to look forward to that school bell more than they did. <laughs> Twelve years ago, somebody asked me to set up and run a company. Of course, my inner voice immediately said, <laughs> good one. <laughs> and so the outer voice said, thank you so much for the opportunity. Of course, I'd love to. You can't say no when opportunity knocks. I literally Googled how to run a company, and I was walking around like a character from Law and Order. When somebody asks you to do something like that, you do it. You square your shoulders, you raise your chin, you walk into that boardroom, you make those eloquent boardroom presentations, despite the fact that your zipper might be accidentally down in full view of your audience. <laughs> True story, I wore a long top just in case. I once actually accidentally passed wind loud and long in front of a really, really important global conglomerate chairman, but I managed to convince him it was part of my creative process. <laughs> I fake it to make it work. But here's the thing. Do you know that faking it or characterization can also help you change the world? Method acting, which is one form of acting, is where an actor channels his personal feelings and experiences to his act. So that's called the Stanislavski system. So Stanislavski is this other theater guru dude. He came up with things like emotional recall. For instance, if an actor has to perform something frightening, the actor has to remember something he fears and then act in that person, in that space of that fear. Raymond Hamden, a doctor of clinical and forensic psychology said that the purpose of method acting is to compartmentalize one's personal experiences in order to bring it to that character. In plain English, we call this empathy, one of the key tools to breaking barriers between people, the ability to find a connection between that person's mindset and yours. Imagine the implications of something like this for things like racism, sexism, homophobia. Just think. What if we can think of someone whose lifestyle we do not understand, but we make an effort to learn about that lifestyle and learn about that person? Just think. 
instead of vilifying someone whose life you do not like or you do not understand, you begin to understand where that person comes from. You begin to relate to that person, you literally step into that person's shoes. The effect of that on a global scale, mind-blowing. So, characterization helps empathy. Empathy improves communication. Communication enhances connection. And connection creates change. And you know what? It all starts with you, just you. Who you decide to change into, to break your own barriers in order to change the world. And then you realize it wasn't about faking it at all. You realize that that new person was inside you all along. Acting or faking it is really the most real thing you can do. Hey, oh my God, what do you know? Hi, I'm Shanuki, and I'm a TEDx speaker. Thank you.